Sentimental. We adjust it. Oh, I freaking dropped it. Right. I'm going to tell you a story. And it's a story about how I was trapped in a toxic friendship for nearly, you know, a bit of elementary school and nearly half of high school. Now, why was I stuck in this toxic friendship? Why didn't I just leave? It's because I was spineless. I had no backbone. I was a complete, complete people pleaser. I didn't want to, you know, cause controversy and, you know, oh, anything for an easy life. I just was too scared to speak out. And it's, you know, something that's been, let me turn my car off, man. Don't want to flatten that battery. It's just something that I could have invested so much time into other things, into other people, made so many different friendships. But because I was with this one guy for so long, it wasted so much of my valuable youth. Now let's talk about this guy. This guy was your typical textbook manipulative guy, right? He would always seek validation from me. We were so-called best friends, but the interesting thing is, is that I was sort of like his only friend, like his only close friend, if anything. And he was very, you know, very sort of sly in what he was doing. And we weren't kind of like typical friends. He'd always try and seek validation from me. Now, you know, guys will know that if you have, you know, guy friends or whatever, that we like to banter each other, you know, we'll like make fun of each other's appearance, make fun of each other, laugh, etc, etc. I remember one instance where he like told me that he was talking about my ears, right? And he said, oh, you know, you can get them like pinned back and stuff, um, you know, so you don't look like Dumbo. And he was, I think he was only doing this to like make this girl laugh. This, like, you know, girl that he sort of was kind of friends with, kind of not with. Uh, <laughs> he was trying to make her laugh. And it was working, you know, and I was just sort of, you know, nonchalant about it. But I remember this instance where we had to do a sort of, like, health assessment for school. I forget what it was for. And you had to put, like, your, like, average weight kind of thing. And I put my weight as, like, it was in the category of, like, underweight, slightly underweight, average, slightly overweight, etc. I put mine as average, which probably was untrue. I was, I think I was underweight in terms of BMI standards. And uh, well, I was talking about it to him. He said, oh, yeah, I put mine as average. And I started snickering because he was kind of a chubby guy. No disrespect, but, you know, he could have... Yeah, I, I have seen him recently and he has lost some weight. So, you know, respect for that. But, you know, he was kind of chubby. And him saying that he'd put his weight as average was funny to me. As soon as he saw me laughing, he stormed off. Like, literally, he gave me this look like this and just walks off. And I'm like, oh, what the hell? So I start walking with him. I'm like, yo, what's up? He's like, why have you said that? That's so horrible. And I apologized and, you know, accepted my apology. But I was just thinking, how is it okay for you to make fun of my appearance? I mean, it's completely fine. It's just male banter. But why, when I do it to you, it's, <laughs> it's you know, a wrong thing. And hell, your weight is something you can, tr can control. I can't control where my ears go. Sure, I could get them pinned back. But why would I? This is how I'm made. And it was just little things like that that showed telltale signs that this was just not a productive or... I guess fruitful, I don't know how you describe it. It was just a complete waste of each other's time. I guess he wanted to hold on to me because I was sort of his only friend. The only guy that sort of gave him an intention and only was the kind of guy who was nice to him. There was other instances as well where he was just very like vindictive and argumentative. And I remember one time, right, we were sort of in this group walking. It was me and this guy walking in front and then there were like two girls behind us just chatting, right? And we were arguing about something. I can't remember what it was. But I was like, you know, very nonchalant about it. I didn't want to argue with him. But I was just, you know, calling him out on his bullshit or something. And he started getting proper mad. And then I said this one thing. And then the next thing you know, he like punches me in the arm. But it wasn't like a proper like punch. It was more of just like a, like that. And not, I'm not going to lie. It did kind of hurt. It was just like a, it was just a pain. And then it went away. I looked at him so confused. I'm like, why the hell have you just punched me? And then the girls behind us came up to us and like, oh my God, Mac, are you okay? Why, why have you done that? Why are you? And then he started getting all defensive. Like, oh, of course you take his side. And I didn't want to talk anymore about it because, you know, <laughs> my mother is a very sort of overprotective person. And if she heard that this guy had punched me, she would have absolutely lost his shit. So I wasn't going to mention it to anyone. Saying that, the girl that was walking behind us mentioned it to her mum and then her mum messaged my mum asking if I was okay. 
So I went into the living room and she's like, what's this about so-and-so punching you? And I'm like, oh shit, here we go again. <laughs> so I explained what happened and you know, she like started messaging this guy's mom saying, why is your son punch my son? And um, you know, this guy sent me a message and he'd sent message in the most weirdest way. He'd send them like le letters. He'd like say from so-and-so at the end of them. Anyway, I was, I received this message from him and it was something along the lines of, oh, I'm so sorry about uh, if I made you feel upset today and hurt you. You know, I was, he put, I, I'm sorry. I was all hot and sweaty and I didn't mean to take it out on you. He was saying that he punched me because he was hot and sweaty and was frustrated by that. So decided to punch me in the arm. There's something not right about that story. And I knew he was lying. I knew that that wasn't true. He punched me because we had an argument. And that, to be honest with you, that should have been the point where I just called it quits and said, I don't want to hang around with this guy. But I had no backbone. And another interesting thing was that my parents didn't discourage me from not being friends with this guy, which I think is a bad thing on their part because I was telling about how he'd say all these things. And they said, well, well, you know, what are you supposed to do? And I said, well, I, I said, well, I can't not be friends with him. I can't say I don't want to be friends with him anymore. And they said, oh yeah, that would be rude. See, my parents taught me what they should have said is like, no, you need to tell this guy to either stop doing what he's doing or that's it, you're done. But instead they just wanted to avoid conflict the same that I've wanted to. And that's probably where I've got it from, where I wanted to, you know, avoid confrontation and what have you. So I uh, what time are we on Nibba? Nearly lunchtime. I wanted to just, you know, be Switzerland all the time, be a people pleaser. And it's because of my spineless, no backbone attitude that I was stuck with this guy. Now, I'm no longer friends with this guy. And how did the friendship come to, come to an end? I'd love the story to be, oh, I finally put my foot down and said, look, listen to me, if you stop treating me like shit, or I'm done. I'd love to say that at like 14 years old, I put my foot down and I was like, yeah, I'm not going to take this anymore. Sadly, that's not what happened. It was essentially just like a situ situational shift where I think we had like another argument or something. And he started getting closer with like this um, other girl that I said that he tried to make laugh previously. He was becoming more friends with her and he said, oh, me and such and such have found a new way to walk to uh, school. It's a shortcut. Do you want to come with me? And I was like, I'm not really one for taking these shortcuts. And I had my like proper best friend to start walking with me now because he's a year younger than me. And I was like, yeah, I'll just stick to the same route that we were going on. And he's like, oh, OK, that's fine. And this showed another level. Maybe he started wanting to be stopped friends with me. I don't know. That could have been the case. But this so-called shortcut that he went on. So imagine me and my best friend are walking along the street, you know, along the pavement. And we look across the road and we see this guy and this girl walking. They're literally just on the opposite side, like the other pavement on the right. And I'm thinking that's a very interesting shortcut considering that it's literally the same distance, like the same path, basically. It's just literally on the other side of the road. And that was another case of his lying. But I guess he just stopped wanting to be friends with me. And I guess the feeling was mutual because you know, we eventually stopped. We didn't even really hang out out of school, which was the interesting thing. I think he like came to my house once. I never went to his house for like a social, you know, just hanging out, guys being guys. And he, we just stopped speaking after that. We stopped, you know, we might say hello to each other and what have you, but we stopped interacting. We stopped walking together. I stopped hanging around with break time. I found a new set of friends that treat me a lot better. I can joke around with. And I would like, you know, see him on the bus and things and what have you and he literally became somebody that i used to know somebody <laughs> and the most recent time that i've seen him is him coming into the corner shop of my part-time job i remember i was serving a woman and i could see him at the corner of my eye and i was thinking oh shit how's this gonna go down so he came up to the counter i don't think he realized it was me at first but he looked at me and he's like oh hello and he was sort of, you know, we were just civil. I was like, how can I help? He's like, oh, can I get cigarettes for my grandmother or whatever? I was like, sure, got him the cigarettes. He paid for his stuff. I said, okay, the card payment's gone through. He's like, all right, see you later. I said, see you later. We literally interacted like we'd never met each other before, considering how much history we've had together. Now, you know, ultimately that's just the way that things happened. But if I was you and you had a friend, if I could go back, honestly, I would have been adamant. 
I would have put my foot down. I would have been less spineless and said to this guy, look, I don't want to take your shit anymore. I don't want to be friends with you anymore. And that's the advice that I give to you, my friend. If anyone is treating you like shit, right? You always hear the phrase, treat others how you would wish to be treated. So treat yourself how you'd wish to be treated. Don't stand for this crap any longer. Why should you have to deal with toxic people who literally, if you like moved away like tomorrow or flipping died tomorrow, they probably won't even care. You've got to honestly just stick to your guns. Life is a single player game. You've got to look out for number one sometimes. Of course, have companions. Of course, you know, look after people that you care about. But you can't look after these people and can't be your best self if you don't take priority for yourself. And I guess that's it. That's the best advice I can give you guys. Hope you've learned something from this. And don't take no shit from anyone. And also don't take shit from the sun because it's blinding me. Take care, boys.